Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is live from Harlem in New York, The Ramble, from New York until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go spending another 25 goddamn minutes with Larry Goddamn Brown. <laughs> it's going to be goddamn funny. Yeah, yeah, let's change it from bubbles to goddamn. It's re- what was it, John Wayne? That is re- goddamn ridiculous. Re- goddamn ridiculous or something. Re- goddamn ridiculous. Oh, boy. So, do I, how do I sound, by the way? Do I sound better than I usually sound? You sound like you always do. You no, sound, no. Uh, your voice sounds the same as it did 40 years ago. Yeah, but I, ju- I just bought a $300 microphone, and I just want to know, does it sound different? Uh, not to me. Oh, okay. Well, I was listening to it playback, and it sounds better. sounds better. Oh, okay. Yeah. But well, anyway. I got a bad ear, so. Yeah, well, it's a, b- a bad ear. I mean, do you yeah. literally have a bad ear, or? Uh, yeah, I've got raging tinnitus, and... Oh really? Yeah, this is uh, the typical. Uh, Does it hurt? Or anything? You, anything you, you, they can do for that? Nope. <laughs> oh well, I've got I've got neuropathy, right? Every old people get neuropathy. People with diabetes get neuropathy. A lot of people get neuropathy. Neuropathy is very common, where you lose really all the nerves in your feet and legs. They just don't, and then they stop transmitting to your brain. And so you don't have a sense of balance. All right? Oh, wow. Okay. So I have neuropathy. Uh, and it's, it's a, I, I live with it, okay? But I go to this neuro, neuro, neuro what do they call it? Neuro, uh, nerve guy, whatever. And um, he tells me, I've got neuropathy. All right, fine. What do we do about it? Well, there's very little you can do about it. Well, wait a minute. This is medical science. I know. A lot of people have neuropathy. Don't you have something? And no, not really. There are a couple of operations we do that may help, but you know, that's it. And I'm going, this is ridiculous. You know? Uh, yeah, it's like they're not even trying. Yeah, I mean, come on. You go out, you, you solve uh, the mystery of COVID in a week and a half. And you can't come up with some kind of thing to clear up my neuropathy or at least to help it or to compensate for it or whatever? No, we don't have anything like that. Okay, well, do, what, do you have anything? Yeah, well, we got a pill, uh, Lyrica, pregabalin, it's called generically. And uh, uh, so I do pregabalin. And the pregabalin makes me forget stuff, you know? Like, I'm taking a high, the last couple of days I've been taking a really high dose and I'm feeling a lot better, but I also remember a lot less, okay? And I, I'm wobbly and I bump into walls and whatever, but at least the neuropathy is, is better. But it's it, the drug is worse than the disease, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's always, always a trade-off. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the method of cure in a lot of things is worse than the... Uh, I mean, I just think of the way they cure a lot of things today, and it's kind of like voodoo science. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. I, you know? Not a not a fan of big pharma. But. Yeah. Like, well, I've got this. What do I do for it? Here, take a drug. What? I have to take a drug? Why? Well, because you have to take a drug for this. And, and it's the only thing that will fix it. Okay, well, what are the side effects of the drug? Well, you might feel a little lightheaded and disoriented and forget stuff. Oh, great. Those are the side effects. Uh, do, do you have anything that doesn't have side effects? No. <laughs> you know, and, and when, as you get older, here's the thing that happens when you get older. They start worrying about everything you've got. Right? So if I go to get my yearly test with the doctor, and my blood panel is off. I get sent to an uh, oncologist, hematologist, to find out if it's cancer. Whoa. 
<laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but if I had had the same blood work done and it came out the way it did when I was 50, it wouldn't do anything about it. So, like, currently I'm going through this thing where my doctor sends me a, a note with a prescription kind of thing. says, go in and get a new CT scan for your, uh, your nodules in your lung. Now, I have these two little nodules in my lung one of which I've had for eight years. Now, anytime you have a nodule that's eight years old, they don't do anything about it. They say, they say that's benign. Doesn't change size in eight mm-hmm. years. There was a newer one that appeared about two years ago, the first time I got any kind of a scan of my lungs. Uh, it's since the one that was before where it was like eight years ago. Uh, and it came out, and it's a, called a prefissural um, a node, and I look it up, and it says, "Oh yeah, you, these things can grow in size, but they're never considered, but they're never considered malignant." So now I get this thing from my doctor to go get another scan, like a year later after the last one, and I'm going, "Why?" I mean, at the bottom of the last report, it said suggestions, um, um, retest if, if when you want to, you know, occasionally. Well, I, it just makes no sense to me. If the two I've got aren't threatening at all, why even yeah. do it again? Well, because, you know, how, look how old I am, you know. Oh, it might have gotten worse. You might have lung cancer. No, you know, don't, uh, you know it's enough that I'm going to a doctor for, uh, for leukemia, okay, and it's a, 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 a kind of leukemia that is manageable, okay, so I'm not worried about that, but I have to go in every three months for a test to make sure that everything's fine, right? And that that's okay by me. Keep me alive that way. But don't make me go in and get one more test, one more CT scan, just because you think, well, we've got to make sure it hasn't gotten larger. Well, what are the chances it got larger? Well, there isn't any chance it got larger, but we want to make sure it didn't. You know, it's just ridiculous. That's what medicine is today. It's imprecise. Yeah. You know? Yes, and that's why they drive up the cost of health care with mm-hmm. all this shit. Oh, yeah. Endless yeah. testing. I go get a CT scan. That's 500 bucks. The government's yeah. got to pay out. You know? CT, CT anything, anything in radiology is not cheap. You know? Um but I've had, you know, I've had lots of, uh, of uh, um, tests and so on to, to see how I am. And I come out, I okay for the most part. But, you know, I, I came out with this. My doctor said, hey, your blood panel's off. Go to a hematologist, you know, oncologist. So I went to him, and he came out and said, oh, you've got the CLL, which is chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia. Which is, they say, the most common leukemia among old people, and it's really not very much a problem, you know. So, uh, as long as you uh, don't have any symptoms, we don't do anything. I go, okay, that, that's fine. Um, you say you don't do anything. Uh, and they said, we'll just wait and see, and if you don't have any symptoms, we'll just keep an eye on you. And that's fine with me. I like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I also, I got to tell you, it has to do with the doctor too. The doctor I have for the leukemia is great. I mean, you walk out of his office and you feel, hey, I feel better about my condition, you know, because he he gave me confidence in it. Well, that's what a doctor should do. That's the job Very. of a doctor. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have any, any, you don't have any life-threatening things yet, do you? Not that I know of, no. Not that you know of, you, but you will, you will get them. I mean, you know, I had prostate cancer. And what it was, it was very minor prostate cancer. It was, uh, it showed up as uh, in one of my lobes, and it was just, uh, you know, very, very light, not heavy enough. But heavy enough that they had to do, operate on the prostate by doing the seeds and doing uh, radiation and so on, just to make sure that it didn't get worse, okay? So they did all of that. And so now every time I do uh, something on the report, it says, um, 
the subject had cancer. And, and I'm going, why is that necessary? You know, it wasn't a deadly form of prostate cancer. Why did you, you put that down? And now probably you'll say had, had cancer and leukemia. So now they're, <laughs> now they're going to want to test me all the time for everything, you know. Oh, yeah. And the fact is that neither of these things are life-threatening. So, at least so far, it's not life-threatening. So, uh, you know. I, uh, how, did you, I, huh? how did you find out you had the prostate cancer? Well, I go in every year. I went, you know, my prostate, my PSA level was a little on the high side, and I had this, I had this horrible doctor. I mean, his office looked like a illegal abortion clinic. <laughs> you know, and uh, hangers. And he was, you know, he went, then he wanted to do a, finally a biopsy on me, and I went, I have. Screw this. So I went and had somebody, I, you know, I, my doctor, I, my uh, uh, regular doctor, uh, my general practitioner, uh, suggested a guy to me, and I went to see him. And he was, he, I, I never liked a urologist. Urology is a form of medicine that is complete with nothing but a b- bunch of uh, just weird people doing it, you know. And this guy wasn't weird at all, and he was very helpful, and he didn't rush it, and he l- took a test. And he said, well, it looks a little suspicious. We want to send you over to an oncologist. And the oncologist looked at it, and he said, okay, we need to operate on it. We'll put, do radiology, and then we'll uh, do the seeds. And he said, they should take care of it. I said, I looked at him. I said, am I going to die of this? And he looked at me, and he went, no. You know, like, <laughs> so silly boy. You know, you, it's not like you, you, you're you in, in danger. And, and to this day, knock on wood, uh, almost five years later, yeah, the uh, high PSA has not returned. So... I'm fine. And that doctor, that, that urologist, I love him because he watched out for me, you know. And I knew he wasn't going to do anything that wasn't necessary, entirely necessary. He, he doesn't even like to do biopsies if he doesn't have to. But then he did it, and it was totally painless, which it shouldn't really? be. So, you know, I, I really uh, I really like my yeah, urologist. I thought that was painful, those things. Yeah, it, it, some people say it's been painful to them. To me, it just sounded like he was using a staple gun, you know, and that was Ooh. it. I didn't feel anything. So, Did but, they give you anything for that? No, no, no. He said, we oh. could put you out, but it's so fast, and it pr- you probably won't feel anything because they, they sh- shoved some... Uh, liquid up there to numb the whole area and everything oh. you know so uh i uh, but i i just trusted him he, he and i trust him to this day it's the one time i look forward to a doctor who's going to do tests on me and uh, every year he draws the blood and every year he writes me a note the next day congratulations you're fine you know and that sounds uh, like a good doctor a very good doctor you know, and the doctor I've got the leukemia guy is terrific. I love him. He's really, you know, he's just. I don't care if they're lousy doctors. Just have a nice bedside manner, okay? You know, these guys happen to be pretty good. In fact, the guy who did the seeds on me is the guy who did the prostate seeds on uh, on uh, what's his name, uh, the, the America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani. Mm. Remember he had the. Uh, do you remember when he had prostate cancer and they put yeah, seeds yeah. in? Well, this pretty common. This was the guy who did it. Kept Rudy Giuliani alive. That's the one thing I will never forgive him for. But <laughs> uh, otherwise, he's a pretty good doctor. Yeah. But you don't. You, you are ever, you are you in have the? You done have you ever had a colonoscopy? I've never had that, and that just sounds like. Well, it's not the colonoscopy; it's the preparation for it. That well, I do a prep. Awful. I do a prep. A lot of people don't do, and it, it's just a, it's a small bottle of stuff, uh, and uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. If I went to the store, or maybe I may have some in my closet. It's just very simple. You just drink it once, and then you poop your brains out. 
But they make you, a lot of other people make you go to get this thing where there's like a gallon of the stuff you got to drink. Yeah. Over a period of time. And it doesn't work as well as the other stuff, you know. Uh, citric uh, something or another. Um, but it, it uh, you know, it, it, yeah, the prep is, the, the prep is shitty, Okay. Uh, it, you, you drink this stuff, and then it, you, it's kind of like uh, you evacuate everything that's in your bowels, in your intestines. And then you took all take, night, right? Yeah. Well, no. It, it, after about about the fifth time, you're on the toilet. Okay, it's pretty much through. Okay, it starts coming out clear. All right, and then the next morning, you got to do a little bit more before you go to see him, and you have to poop your brains out once or so. And then uh, you go to the doctor, and he sticks a needle in your arm, puts you out, okay? And you wake up, you feel like, you know, 25 minutes has been edited out of your life. And you wake up, and the doctor's there going, okay, we're through, you know? So in that respect, it's simple. The prep is just, you know, is not fun. It's not, yeah, it's not uh, harmful. They want, they want me to do that, and I'm not going to do it. So. Well, I would do it. You know, I don't do it anymore because my doctor said at your age we don't do them. You know, because they figure if I get a, if I get a, a, a cancer, colon cancer, I'm not, go- I, I'm not going to get it before I'm dead. All right? It's very slow growing. If you go tomorrow and they find a bunch of polyps and they cut them out and they all come back non-cancerous, some of them they say are precancerous, you know, but whatever. Uh, and then they come back with that. They just tell you to come back in a couple of years, you know, no big deal. Um, but it's like, uh, you know, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm on this, in this doctor mill, you know, where it just goes on and on and on. Every, and I'm always fearful of going to my GP every year to get the blood test because you're going to find something else about me that needs to be done. And at my age, everything needs to be done, okay? So it's, it, it, just pray you don't live to be as old as I am, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I told you about Christy, didn't I? Uh, I saw that. I heard about it. Yeah, oh. I was. I, shit, I wanted to bring that up at the beginning, but I was just shocked by that. Yeah, she she's been sick for about seven years. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. I I saw. I had a gig in Modesto. I think she lived out in Modesto when I, it was like fifteen years ago or so, and she came out to see me. And she was, God, she's such a beautiful, oh. nice woman. Everybody, the first word that comes out of everybody's mouth about her was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, she was st- stunningly beautiful. Okay, yeah. um, and and uh, uh, and a personality to match, which is rare. Very nice person, very nice person. And uh, she worked with me at the Quake, and then she worked for a short time, and then she worked with me at uh, Live One Hundred and Five. And at a certain point, I had to get rid of her as a producer because. Uh, she was becoming too protective of the show, let me say. You know, I was doing a show one day, and she came in, in the middle of it after uh, not, uh, during a break and started yelling at me. You shouldn't have done that. You should have done this. And, hey, why would you do that, you know? Really? <laughs> yeah, and I just said, I can't, I can't put up with this. So we, we parted ways. But then I went and did the thing for Play TV, and I got a call from her, and she said, I left my husband, and I'm looking for a job and if you know anybody that has a job please help me you know find a job and i said well i might have one for you and i hired her on a play and you remember she ran that office and produced the show and she was uh she was pretty terrific you know yeah and uh it was a pleasure to work with her at that point she had suddenly grown up a little bit and knew how to comport herself and then i when i when uh Play TV was over. I brought her over to, uh, um, what do you call it, CNET Radio. Uh, and uh, she worked with me there for about a year. So, you know, and she was very close to me over the years. And I, I, I just adored her. 
I just thought she yeah. was the best. I didn't know she'd been sick that long. God. Yeah, she had breast cancer, and okay. uh, they did something about it. Um, I might say she had lovely breasts, you know, so uh, sad, to, sad, sad How to say. old was she? She was, I think she had approached, she was in her 50s by that time. God. You know, and, yeah. and uh, but it, it, it somehow, it went away, of course, you know, and then it came back. It had gone somewhere else, and I guess she'd just been fighting cancer for the last uh, seven years. So it hit her in her mid fifties, you know, because uh, she died at sixty one. So you know, but it was sad to see her go. Uh, and I, I thought I thought I had told you, but I guess I didn't. No, the no. The last time we talked, I hadn't had wasn't in possession of this information. But you knew her pretty well. I mean, yeah, she was just a you know like a super nice person, Tam. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, so much for the karma theory. Well, nobody. Ha- yeah, yeah. Like only the good die young. Well, wait a minute. That is true. <laughs> it is true in her case. You know, uh, she should have had. She should have had at least ten more years. But yeah. oh yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you live long enough, Larry, like I am, a little advice to you. You're, what, 72 now? Yes, I will be on September. Yeah, 72. Uh, they why, can't, uh, why can't they come up with a cure for cancer? How long is this going to take? Well, there's no one cancer. That's, that's the thing I there's found. There's so many. But... Yeah, it, cancer is an o- umbrella term for growths which uh, invade the body and, you know, you have to take care of. Some of them are very simple. Sometimes, like I've heard the word cancer twice or something like cancer, a cancer once and leukemia another time. And in both cases, I had completely manageable cancers. So people, they say, these are things that I'm going to die with but not from. Okay. So I'm still wondering. I wake up every morning and go, what's going to get me? You know? And uh, one day I will find out what's going to get me. I have no idea. But, yeah, it's yeah. Just, as you get older, you think more and more about it. Do you go to a doctor once a year for a checkup? No, they always ask me to come in, and I never do it. You see, I mean, at your age, it might be good to do it. It's just as a preventative thing, because a lot of times they can catch stuff before it's a problem, you know. I mean, if I didn't go to the urologist with this prostate cancer... If I didn't go to urologist every year, uh, I, I wouldn't have known about this this cancer, which was not very bad. You know, it wasn't wasn't very invasive, especially at my age. Most men, if you live to be my age, will get cancer, prostate cancer, and uh, you, but you won't die of it at that age. You know, so when guys get it at fifty, that I worry about it for them. But, you know. But no, you should go get you should go get a PSA test just to make sure your prostate's in good shape, and it probably is. You know, though you don't know, you haven't had to use it for a long time. Well, I think uh, uh, the, I did my last blood test last year. They, uh, well, they there did. was no PSA test uh, score, and I, I called the doctor, and she goes, "Oh, uh, we stopped doing that at age 70. Really, I heard I heard it was well. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're stopping doing them at age 70. Yeah. She's, uh, she, I think she said, well, if you get a high score, that means they're going to start doing a lot of invasive tests, and they think it uh, usually doesn't kill you anyway. So that's why. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's still, it, it's, it's a, you know, I, it, not supposed to be, a, they, they've argued for years that the PSA test didn't mean much, you know, that, that they were unreliable. But some people feel that they are an indicator of something if you have it, and that's uh, mm-hmm. that's a problem in and of itself. But I wish you good health. <laughs> I wish you. But you're at that age where you know you get in the doctor mill. Oh well, I think you better go see this guy for this, and you better go see that guy for this, and this guy for that, and then you've got like Marjorie, she has her calendar filled every week with doctor's appointments. She has a doctor for every part of her body. <laughs> yeah, so. 
It's amazing. Well, she, well, she's healthy. <laughs> she is. I, I think she's healthy. She thinks she's not healthy. You know, she's you got back problems and things like that, but she hasn't come down with cancer like I have twice. I, I use it as an excuse not to take out the garbage. Uh, take out the garbage. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I can't. I got cancer. You know, I've got cancer. I think you better take it out. Anyway, hey, listen, we're, uh, we're running out of time, and this is always a pleasure. And I don't know what number this is, but uh, we uh, we did. What did we say? 230 at one point? It's getting close to 250, yeah. You're getting close to 250. Boy, we should hold like a big party or something when <laughs> when we get to 250. But uh, anyway, Larry Bubbles Brown, who meets us, uh, joins us, uh, has something yeah. to do with us once a week. Thank you very much, Larry. See you next Again, week. Greatly appreciated. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Now in its tenth year, this is Gabnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Where are we? I'm um, gonna make sure. I gotta turn this down here. There we go. You turn that down. Wait a minute. Oh, what do we do here? We're supposed to turn something down. Okay. Uh, okay. Am I turning it down? All right. Jeez. Uh, you know, I'm still trying to use, learn how to use this new piece of equipment I got, and uh, it's a, uh, it's a pain in the ass. But you know, it also happens to be very good. I mean, I've listened to the audio from the show. Uh, it, from the other day, and it was just terrific, you know. But I have to get things um, uh, set, and it's all kinds of things you have to adjust, and uh, especially my voice. I've got the uh, most of the tone down. I'm still trying to take care of what we call um, um, g getting rid of uh, background sound. Uh, you may hear a little bit of my, you know, have, what do you call it, air conditioner in the background. And that's a little thing you got to deal with, you know. So anyway, 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 anyway. Got two people sitting here waiting to come in. Let's uh, hope that maybe we have more than this. Uh, let me admit all the people that are here. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, do this. There we go. And uh, there is uh, our old friend Charlie Wallace, of course. And uh, another old friend, Jason McKinney, has been calling the show for years now, on and off. So, uh, hello, Jason. How are you? How's it going? Yeah? How are you doing? I'm uh, doing pretty good. Yeah? Yeah? And uh, you, Charlie? I'm doing great. you doing? I'm having fun. You're having fun? At my family reunion. Oh, you're at your family reunion. Yeah. Now, when you hold a family reunion, this is a large family, is it? Yeah. In fact, it's even larger than I said yesterday. I yeah, found out we have 159 it. people. Really? Attending. You really are Catholic, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> Raised Catholic, anyway. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so uh, uh, how many people in your family did you say again? 159 at the reunion. We got a lot more than that in the family. I'll tell you, I saw my uh, my business manager, Gary, uh, and also a longtime friend, I will have to say, uh, is uh, went out to uh, Jerusalem to see his entire family. And I saw a picture of it. It's just all these kids all over the place. And they're all his great-grandchildren. Great-grandchildren. Yeah, you know, twins huh? running around today. What? A bunch of twins running around, you know, under 13, in between 10 and 13. Yeah, so you're at least an uncle or something like that, right? Oh, to, yeah, to uncle, granduncle, or whatever you call it, yeah. Granduncle, okay. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, you can also be a grandfather because you've had children. Yes, I will be a grandfather in October. Really? Yeah. We should hold a party here or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it only took me to age 74 to be a grandfather. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, some you only have do one daughter or more? I have two daughters and a son. And which and the one? The oldest one is finally pregnant. So. And, and what? The oldest is finally pregnant. So the other two could have kids 
any time now. Oh, I see. Okay, so you, but she's pregnant, and she's going to have the baby when again? In October. In October. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah, he's got some good-looking daughters too. Does he really? <laughs> <laughs> he posts some pictures on Facebook, you know, their birthday celebrations. Like, dang, yeah. Charlie. <laughs> Yep, in good genes. What can I say? <laughs> does that does that make you feel older? Oh, I feel old anyway. When when I see when I see all my cousins, I remember as little kids running around and playing with them, and we all have gray hair now. <laughs> That's why I shave. <laughs> yep. What happened to those little kids? Yeah, they have my, gray. My they... son got home from work today at ten o'clock. I'm like, holy shit, man, how old am I? My son is 16 years old and working until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Wow. They kind of make you feel old. You've only had one kid, right? Yeah. 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 Why did you didn't decide not to have more, or was that just not in the... No, like, uh, when my son was born, I realized I did not have patience for a baby. So I did not want to be an asshole father who beat my kids. So I just decided <laughs> not to have anymore. <laughs> I'll, I'll tolerate the one and I'll, I'll deal with him and I'll have, you know, my patience with him. I don't know that I could do it for two. So I learned to stop. So raise my kid good. He's doing really good on roll and, you know, oh, well, AP yeah. classes and stuff and already getting college credits and he's only in 10th grade. So. Yeah. How good time to stop. How terrific is yeah. that? Okay. So anyway, so he's 16, right? And does he yeah. does he have uh, girlfriends or whatever, or, or a boyfriend? I don't I don't know what his inclination is. Uh, I will say my son is on the spectrum. He's not really straight heterosexual, but I don't think he's interested in anybody really. Really? What do you yeah. mean he's on the spectrum? Isn't that something you say for like? Uh, Autism and so on. But that's what you have to say for sexuality now, too. Yeah. So he's not interested in anybody in particular at this so point. I, I really think that my wife thinks he's interested in everybody, like boys and, and girls and everything. But I. Well, isn't that great? Because it's or girlfriend, right? That, that's he, what I was thinking. I, I, thought like, I, I often said I would love to be bisexual like that because then you never have to worry about having a date to the prom. You'll find somebody. Twice as many people to F. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're like a good father, right? You don't care what he is in that hey, respect. Hey, I, I just want him to be happy. You know, be happy yep. with what you have. And, you know, I, I will teach you, though, you are, you are different. And I will let you know people aren't going to accept you the way you are. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you just got to deal with it. Up well, I think the only reason why in this day and age you care about whether your kid is straight or not is it's much be easier being straight than yes. being gay. Yep. You know? But that's, that's not the case like it used to be, however. It's not because the way my kid is, like, you know, he has long hair. He paints his fingernails and dyes, like, the tip of his hair and stuff. And in my day, he would have been bullied and picked on a lot. He said he's not at school at all. So, yeah. you know. Good for the kids these days. That is not good. Annoying. Yep. Well, maybe he's just living up to his own muse at this point in his life, you know, and he wants to do those things because it makes him feel like an individual. But he'll grow out of that. And that—that's why I don't push him on anything. I don't push him to say, "Oh, yeah, you're gay," or you know, "You're just confused" or anything. I just say, "You know." You're still growing up. You really don't know what you are yet. You know, who cares? Yeah. You know? And why should you have to decide now? Right? Yeah, you don't have to decide now. See, I hate Especially the idea. You're, I hate you're the, not being picked on in school, so, you know, hey, whatever. You know. I hate the idea that with kids, we have a tendency to believe and, and worry about them uh, having to pick something to do with their lives when they're like 18, Children. 19, right? Hey, you're going to college. What are you going to study for? Well, maybe I don't want to go to college for about... 10 years until I know yeah. what I want to do. But to have to make a choice when you're yeah, like 20, that, 18, that, 19. That's such a crazy thing. When I was a kid, though, I had so many different things I wanted. I wanted to be a lawyer so bad when I was a kid. 
Mm -hmm. But then I realized, you know, I'm not that great in school. There's so much schooling. I'm a great argumenter, but, you know, I, I argue very well. But I just I did not like school. And I realized how much schooling there was. And I learned, you know, there's so many different, like, aspects and avenues of being a lawyer. You know, there's so many different mm -hmm. specialties that, that it made me lose my interest in it. You know, um, my kid, he has no interest in a job at all, whatever, so far. Like, he doesn't be like, I want to do this. I want to do that. And that's that's just a, so well, why should he have to me. To I don't understand. But why at 16 should he even have to figure that out? He shouldn't. But I just, I feel in my day, in my time, I knew what I wanted to do. I'm not doing yeah, what I too. wanted to do. But, you know, I, I, I'm in communications now, kind of working on computers and stuff. But, you know, I don't. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a, you know, in politics like I wanted to do when I was a kid. I was very lucky. I always knew what I wanted to do, or at least within a certain category. I wanted to be in show business. Uh, radio was something that came to me into my life pretty easily, okay? But what I really wanted to be was an actor. And I figured I finally got to the point where I went, well, if I do a radio show and I get really popular with that radio show, somebody will ask me to act. To this day, I've never been asked to act. So, well, you know, and I'm 84 now, and I don't think I'm getting any big movie jobs now, you know. You were just stolen. They didn't even ask you. They just put you on a movie and without your permission. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, just, have, uh, I have been in um, a couple of movies, some of which you've never heard of. I was also in George Clooney's first movie, um, One Fine Day. Uh, if yeah. you listen to he wakes up in the morning... And the radio goes on, his alarm clock radio, and guess who's on the alarm clock radio? Ta-da. Ta-da. You and Lori. Huh? Was Lori on it, too? Lori was on it, too. Yeah. Lori was on it, too. You know how much we got paid for that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I, I said, how much are you going to pay us for this? And they went, well, we weren't planning on paying you because we can just record <laughs> this off the radio. And I said, that's true. I said, if you want to use it, okay, go ahead. Now, the other movie we were supposed to be in at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll explain that in a second, was Bug's Life. Uh, I got to get a call from Pixar, which is across the bay from San Francisco, and they asked me, uh, uh, listen, Alex, we're doing a movie. It's called A Bug's Life, and it's all about these different bugs, and we have different bugs, different kinds of people playing different kinds of bugs. And we were wondering if you and Lori would like to play two of the bugs who play opposite each other because we like your repartee and the way you sound with each other and so on. And I said, really? We'd love to. You know, I didn't even ask if it was, they were going to pay us. I just want to be in a Pixar film, you know? Yeah. He said, we're going to have a meeting at noon, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll call you later on this afternoon and arrange for you to come over here, and we'll have you do some readings and so on, you and Lori. So I went, oh, that's great. And I went and told Lori, I said, would you mind doing it? She says, of course not, right? Well, noon comes and noon goes, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Finally, the phone rings. It's the guy from Pixar. He said, I have something to tell you, Alex. Uh, we had our meeting, and we decided we're not going to use your characters. Watching that movie and hearing like what they were thinking about doing, mm -hmm. I really think that was a mistake that they didn't. I really think that that would have fit in that movie so well. Yeah, well, I don't know what they wanted us to play against each other, but they wanted us to work as a team. Yeah, you probably yeah. would have just been exactly what you are. You would have been like the the morning bugs that woke everybody else up, and you know, with your little <laughs> stories and stuff or whatever. And it would have been great. Yeah, well, it was never to be. Okay, yeah. so where is everybody tonight? Right. Yeah, it's Friday night. Come Last on, night was a pretty good bunch of people. Well, you know, Josh has to work now on Friday, every other Friday. Yeah. Uh, and, but he was here two nights this week, so, you know, he was he was doing it. And then uh, who else? Uh, where, where, where's Alan Jeff? Alan might be out with his mom. Where's Jeff? Where's yeah, Alan's Alan? with his mom tonight. He said that last night. Alan's with his mom tonight. And it's just yeah. us uh, three guys, I guess, here. Uh, and and yeah. screw everybody else, you know. I mean, what happened to some yeah. of the old crowd? They don't call anymore. I guess they got tired of this. Even Jeff's not here. What's Jeff doing on Friday? Night? Yeah, I was saying, where's Jeff? Yeah. Was he out of town? Who, Jeff? 
Yeah. No, he's back home. Okay. He's yeah. back home. He's yeah. Home. Where are you, uh, Charlie? You're in uh, what city? I'm in Chicago. You're in Chicago. Is that a hotel room? Yes, this is the Hyatt uh, Hotel in, in Chicago. Really? It's a nice room? Oh, it's a beautiful room. It's bigger than my apartment. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on the south side, are you? Well, the good thing about uh, the... Yeah, southeast, yeah. Well, the good thing about those hotels is they have good Wi-Fi, obviously, because yeah. you're not dropping the call or anything, and your picture looks great. You should just move into that hotel oh, that and great. stay there for the rest of your life. <laughs> I wish more this people would before. call because I forgot to bring my soda in here. And if I had more people here, I'd let you talk to each other for a moment. But I don't know if you two want to talk to each other necessarily. So, did, did you see the Joe Biden in uh, Detroit today? No. Uh, he did a really good job, man. It was, it, it was, uh, it, it, it was, there were some parts that you could tell were it wasn't supposed to seem like it was so planned out, but it was because he's like, yeah. you know, you have all those people behind him. And he's like, you know, my, my dad would kick my ass if I didn't say, and he like turned around and be like, yeah. you know, sorry for showing you my back, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they started chanting, we got your back. We got your back. Yeah. It, it was, it was very good. It, it was like, if, if you didn't know how things work, you would think that it was just, you know, yeah. So just natural and everything, but it, you could tell it was kind of planned well, out. Well, you know, I mean, I, really I, 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 I don't want to get into this again tonight, but I guess we will. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, the only problem that I have is uh, I don't, you know, his chances of winning this election are not horrible, but they're not particularly good. Only you, when you people know. sit there and say that. You know, get on board. He said that he's going to run. Yeah. S stop with the, you know, we want somebody else. He's running. Either you're behind him or you're for Trump. But, you know, this is we the most, probably the most critical election I can remember in my lifetime. Really, it's between Joe Biden and no democracy. Right. Okay. And it's so scary that it's even close. Yeah. Yeah. You well, look at Project 2025, and I, I get scary chills from that, thinking about Trump being in and doing all that crap. Well, he <laughs> claims he doesn't have anything to do with 2025. No, except for he and, put the and whole entire team and, together. And, to. and, and I probably should take him at his word, except that he lies about everything. He lies all the time. And it's his team. It's people who worked for him who are yeah. the Heritage Foundation now. And yeah. he put his team in the Republican National Convention. You know, it's his yeah. family running this shit now. So, it, you know, these people just bowed down to him. They threw their fucking spine away and just said, we worship you, Trump. Yeah. Well. At least, you know, Dem Democrats seem like so much. I'm sorry for the language, but seem so much of pussies sometimes. But they'll at least still stand up to their own yeah. people when they disagree with them. You know, and that's the one thing Republicans, that, you know, you've said in, you know, all these years, Democrats have to fall in love. Republicans just have to fall in line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, the, uh, the, the problem is here that I think that my problem with Joe Biden at this point is he spoiled goods. And also, you know, you got to remember that four years ago he said he was only going to be an interim president. He, he promised that he promised that after this election, he, he, he never said he was only going to run one term. No. Yes, he did. He did. He did. I don't remember that. He even admits he to it. He even admitted to it tonight. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. He he basically said I'm going to be an interim president. And yep. uh, you know, um, yes, yeah, I, I then we can turn this. He was going to be the bridge. And he was going to be the bridge. Right that was the term he used. And then he said he was going to turn it over to the younger generation. Yeah. He, 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 that was during the campaign. Once he became president, he never said that again. <laughs> and maybe he still will. Maybe that's still his plan is to, hey, I'm going to run for president. I might stay in for a year or I might drop out right after the convention and hand it over to Kamala. You know, and, yeah. and that's where I've said in the past, I, I can't stand Kamala for one reason. I cannot stand the way she talks. She talks like an elitist from a country club and just has that so, snobby voice behind her. 
I don't really know that much about her, so I know I have to get over it, and I'll stand behind her. You know, hopefully That's funny, because I don't hear her that way at all. Oh, man, that, that just nasally, like, just, oh, I'm from the country club. Marjorie talk. tonight just, Marjorie tonight said to me that she felt that maybe Kamala would be better as a candidate than we think she will be. I, that I she was so. pretty tough. She was really pretty tough with Joe Biden when they were doing the debates. And she called yes. him out at one point and really read him the riot act. And uh, she's capable of that. I think she could handle her own in a debate. My only other question is, is she ready to be president? Is she, is she presidential material? You Why know, wouldn't she be? She has all the other wonderful attributes. She happens to be a, a, a woman, and she also happens to be a racially acceptable. Diverse. Okay. Huh? <laughs> I say diverse. Diverse. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, but believe me, I really don't give a crap about diversity. I give a crap right. about getting the best person you can for the job. And if that person means diversity, I mean, look, we had, you know, what are we talking about diversity here? We had a president who was black. Okay. And, uh, and was he it, did a good job. Wasn't so that, well, wasn't that enough for you people? Person. Wasn't that enough for you people? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> You're getting greedy now. You know. You know what I like. You know what I'd like to see, and, and you've never seen yeah. it. I would like to see a Jewish president. Okay. Me too. Bernie yeah. Sanders well, you know uh, what? You got happened? one over in Israel. Huh? <laughs> yes, yeah, and you have one over in Israel. <laughs> oh, I would like to see a president of native blood. I don't think that'll ever happen. I think there'll be a Jewish president. Yeah, there'll Native Americans should president. be president. After all, we owe them the country back, don't we? Yeah. You know, do you realize that if the Native American had survived in this country and were running this country today, we would not have the problems with the ecology that we have? Because exactly. the, Indi the Native Americans were so at one with being uh, uh, part of nature. Yes. That we'd all be part of nature right now. Yep. You know? Especially the white people. They'd be buried in the dirt part of nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, uh, what happened to the um, Native American in this country was uh, what happens in a lot of cases. You know, time comes along and people get pushed out. Just happens. Yeah. Like know. ninety to ninety-five percent of the Native Americans were killed off. Yes. What ninety? How much? Ninety to ninety-five yeah. percent. It was. They survived. Brutal. Talking. Uh, they, they think there's about a hundred to hundred and fifty million Native Americans in the country. So, you figure ninety-five million people were killed. Wait a minute, but, but, but there are not that many now. No, no there's not that many I mean, now. you said 100. There was back then. But there were 150 million back then? Yes. That if many? That's what they estimate. Like Mexico City was like one of the largest cities from like the beginning of time until just recent times. Before <laughs> Columbus ever came over, it was one of the yeah. largest cities in the world. Wow. There is, like, they, they think there is between 95 to 100... 90, 90 to 150 million Native Americans that lived over here, and after white man came over with the But these are all people that lived within the continental United States. This is not including Aztecs and people like that, right? No, 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 not not continental United States. I'm talking the Americas, North and South America. Oh, okay. So yeah. then so now, the, now the 150 million. So 100, for, yeah. 100 to 150 million people between North and South America. They killed off 95% of them. Yep. Really? Hmm. <clears throat> well, you know, at least they survived better than the buffalo. <laughs> you yeah. know, I saw a thing on the buffalo that, uh, that uh, what's his name, the guy who did the Civil War, Ken Burns did, about the American buffalo. Oh. It was amazing how many buffalo were in this country. I mean, millions. Oh, millions. yes. And we all but killed every one of them off until we I think there's only like a couple hundred left I think there are more now they say they're not nice. as as dis extinct as they once were oh, they're, they're enough in population yeah. we can eat them again mm, they taste good too 
No, well, well I, that's what I hear. There was a place in San Francisco that used to serve buffalo stew. For real. And this was back in the 50s. And I kept trying to think, where did they get enough buffalo to make all the stew they had out there? It had to be something else like rat shit or something like that. You, know? <laughs> hmm. you never know what's in those. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I mean, what happened is, is that races go extinct because people move in and uh, they, you know, I mean, we just took over this country. We took over every inch of it and we finally threw all those Native Americans onto reservations and completely ripped them of their dignity and ripped them of yeah. everything. And it's the most horrible thing that I think anybody has ever done to another group of human beings. And, the you know, slavery was a big problem, but I think what they did to the people that were already here oh, yeah. was we're just as too. terrible. In fact, as Americans, aren't we just terrible you know? Yeah. Well, well, historical. We certainly don't get any better, do we? Yeah. Yes, we're getting better every day. Really? Yeah. I think we're better now than we were in the 1850s. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But we were a little more just a pioneer country. We, we didn't have... It was just a matter of we took stuff because we needed room. We needed the the expansion. Manifest destiny. Manifest yeah. destiny, yeah. Mm. So, anyway, Jeff? I'm okay. <laughs> there he is. Jeff's okay. No feedback today either. What? Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. He, he came, came on. It was quiet. Yeah, he came on perfect today. <laughs> yeah. you, you're getting good at it. Well, occasionally, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to get like 10 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, I just, when I think about this country, I've never, you know, I've, I've never been a proud American. I've never felt that way. I've never felt a great feeling about this yeah. country because from the time I was growing up, I saw nothing but people doing terrible things to other people. Number one, I used to hang around with a bunch of black friends, and I immediately saw what that was all about, you know. And then I, you know, there were just so many other things that, were, that had happened. What you trying to say, Mr. D? <laughs> what I'm saying is Americans are a bunch of shitty people, and America is not this great, wonderful country we'd like to think it is. We live in an illusionary democracy... And we live. We we have a, a, a big illusion about who we are and how good we are. And when you look at how we treated the blacks and how we treated the uh, uh, the Native Americans, hey, let's add into that the Mexicans. Let's add into that. Uh, um, They're native too. Huh? Mexicans are native too. Yeah, Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it just you just go. Uh, am I supposed well, hey, to be proud of that country? Do I really the, want to? The idealism of America, and that's what you should aspire for. for well, the there is an ideal of the... what America is supposed to be, yeah. but it has never been that America. No. But we strive for it. And that's actually what Joe Biden said today. You know, that we haven't accomplished what we should have, but we've strived for it. Mm -hmm. We strive to be the equal rights. We haven't done it. We haven't been the equal rights. We've mistreated people, but we strive for it. But well, like Josh we... said last night, we tried to do every generation. We try to go improve things, right. and and we may only uh, take. Oh, oh, if that's true, if that's forward, true, why are we back. going through what we're going through now? If we constantly try to improve. It looks like America well, because, could vote in this fascist bastard. Right, and we had to take two more steps back. But we'll get three steps forward next time. Yeah, well, how long is that going to take? Four yeah, it may years. take it. You know, how long did it take them to finally give blacks the uh, the right to, to uh, be free, let alone yeah. vote, you know? Yeah. And then, slow, and then after we finally did uh, uh, free the slaves... Uh, what do we do to help them? Nothing. Absolutely especially nothing. Especially in the South, yeah. Huh? It's especially in the South. 
especially in the South. But, you know, I mean, uh, racism extended well into the North as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you know, uh, talk to any black person who grew up in my time frame, and they never felt that they had gotten some kind of equality in this country. Well, come on, Charlie, you moved from the North to the South. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he liked to be that kind of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but I moved to a, a, a liberal oasis in the middle of the red a, country. A, a, a liberal oasis? Where's that? Keep Austin, it weird. Where? Austin, Texas. Austin. Yeah, Austin, it is. Texas. That is a, that is a liberal bastion in the yeah. middle of what is some horrible politics. Yeah. You know, but you know why? Because it's a college town, and college yes. towns are always liberal. Yeah, because uh, it's because they're weird. No, it's not because they're weird. Because the kids are young and they're <laughs> thinking of new thoughts and stuff. Yeah. Well, because no, their their town out. saying is "keep it weird," isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Keep it weird, Austin. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well no, we I, like it weird. <laughs> no, but I mean, the thing is that usually college towns, the reason they're usually liberal is because uh, what what is more liberal than freedom of thought in a university setting? Yes. You know? And so uh, they're a lot better, you know. But it's, it's a shame, you know. It's a shame what we as Americans have not been able to accomplish from the very beginning. I mean... How could anybody in their right mind even think that slavery is a, is the is a good thing? You know. Well, all they were thinking from their point of view, slavery worked for them. And at that time when America was discovered, everybody was enslaved. We all didn't matter whites enslaved whites. Well, you know, let's be yeah. let's be a little open about this. There were some slave owners who were good. Yeah. Who didn't mistreat their slaves. And and why would you want to mistreat your slaves? That's sheer stupidity. You want them to work for you. You don't want them to be all weakened because you've beaten the crap out of them. Yeah. You know. Don't work for you better if they like you. That's right. That's right. So where is everybody tonight, folks? What happened yeah. here? Like, I'm starting to worry. Is today Thursday and I actually have to work no, tomorrow? No, no, no. <laughs> this is Friday. This is Friday. Yeah. Uh, good, because yeah. I'm starting to get scared. You know? Uh, uh, is, is it, are there graduations going on or something? It is. No, well, not weird. July. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, where's where's Brian tonight? And where's... Uh, yeah. Who else? Who are some of the other folks? Yeah. <laughs> Alan's with his mother. Yeah, we are. Yeah. That out, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, maybe I should just do one day a week, and then everybody will want to call that one day a week, or then nobody will call, and I'll just be here all by myself. <laughs> that could be too, you know. But uh, gee, and just as I was getting the audio down on this show, yeah, you know, last night I listened to the show back, and it sounded perfect. It's amazing how good this board is and how good it makes everything sound. You know, so. Yeah. And it's not a tool. It's a toy you bought. <laughs> you know, I get that from my wife. Yeah. She says, oh, how's your new toy doing? And I went, to, I said to her the other night, I said, it's not a toy. <laughs> you know, if I were a violinist and I went out and I bought a new violin, you wouldn't say to me, so how's your new toy? <laughs> you know, this is, a, this is my what tool. That violin <laughs> makes money. No, but this, yeah. is, this is my tool. You know? That violin makes money. <laughs> anyway, I try to tell her, it's a tool. <laughs> you know, and she said, so are you. And I said, you know, <laughs> argument made. But... Um, you know what we have here? Did anybody listen to the uh, Monday show? You know Paula, who's on the show yeah. on Mondays? Yeah. Yeah. She's staying with us tonight. She's here in New York. Oh, great. She's there. All yeah. right. She'll be on in the in the, your office on uh No, on she's Monday. going home on Monday, so she might not Aww. get back in time. 
So why is she on the show tonight? Because she's sleeping. <laughs> That's should... the problem with having old Past friends. The hmm? Yeah. So that's the problem with having old friends. Well, we got to do it. It's really old weird. Friends. It's strange. Don't ever come stay with us during the summer if you want to come visit, okay? Because we have an air conditioner in the guest room. We have an air conditioner in this room. But if we turn both of them on at the same time, there's a good chance we could blow a fuse. And it's not here in this apartment. It's downstairs in the basement, which we can't go to because nobody's up this time of night. Mm-hmm. So we'd be in the dark all night. I wouldn't be able to finish the show. So we're not willing to take a chance on it. Now, it could <laughs> well be that it would work okay, that I could have that air conditioner on. We tried it today, and this air conditioner on, and it wouldn't blow a fuse. And I did it during the day, so the super's around to go flip the fuse in the in the basement. Yeah. And I do have a fuse box up here, but it never, it never goes bad. It never clicks off. So anyway... Um, it, it, so it worked fine, but I didn't want to take the chance because all that has to happen to blow that fuse downstairs is Marjorie could suddenly say, I think I'm going to warm up some coffee in the microwave. Yeah. Boom, <laughs> everything blows, and, you know. Then I have to reset this all up and get it all going right, you know, and so on. So. You should find out what breaker it is in the basement and see if you can buy a so new she, breaker. Well, she's in there in the other room, fairly hot, fairly hot, warm room. So now after this is over, I'm turning this air conditioner off, and I've got the air oh. conditioner for the other room, and I'll go in there and turn that air conditioner on, and, you know, I'll suffer in the warm heat here for the rest of the night. But, you know, when I'm doing the show, I can't have that not going. Yeah. Anybody hear the air conditioner? No, no, you I don't. Can't. No, you do. I hear just a little bit of a hum in the background. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Yeah. He's got those young ears. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he got those young ears. Yeah. So anyway, so we and we went out to dinner tonight, and and Where'd we just it, it's, it's a local restaurant, very nice little kind of French bistro, you know, and French. Uh, hmm. You said French. French. Yeah. French. See, I don't know that I've ever liked any type of French food except for French oh, really? fries. Uh-huh. Well, there's a beginning. <laughs> yeah. And that's an American food anyway, too. Yeah, the right. potato came from here. I don't know why they ever call them French fries. But anyway. Me either. Yeah. So anyway, so so we went to dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, three of us, right? Two hundred and forty four dollars before tip. Damn. Wow. God, it's gotten expensive, hasn't it? Yeah. That's why I don't go to New York. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy. You know. Going out to a restaurant like with me, my son and my wife is usually fifty bucks. Okay. And then yeah, t- the okay. the, for- very similar to probably where you go to eat to get that kind of price. Down the street, we have a little, you know, little place you can go in and get some pasta and you can get a little something else, you know, and whatever. Always comes out to at least $120, dollars with the tip. Yeah. I mean, wow. it's ridiculous, you know. I think I just come here for... Time four- to move out of New York, Marjorie. Well, here, okay... <laughs> The rent might be cheap, but shoot, man, you're killing you on the food. Well, that's true, but uh, you know, I mean, I, I can't. We can't give up this apartment. Are you kidding me? You know, even if we didn't live here anymore, we wouldn't give it up. Yeah. You know. But uh, anyway, so you know, uh, these are the little problems we have, especially the fact that we have very weak water because we're up on the eighth floor. And then we have this electricity problem. It's like we've been camping out for the last 20 years of our life here. You know? That's why your rent is so cheap. It, it, well, it could be. Well, it's not for other people in the building. <laughs> oh, there are people here paying $8,000 a month. See? But they can run their AC units. No, they can't. They got the same problem yeah. we do. 
And it really might be a $35 fix just to buy a new breaker to put in the box. Yeah. Uh, you mean downstairs? Yeah. Your yeah. breaker just might be old. Well, it, that could be, but try and get them to do anything about it. Yeah. Especially when they look at what we're paying in rent. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't give them exactly, doesn't encourage them to do anything for us. Mm -hmm. Although I do have a, uh, a, what do you call it, a, a super who's pretty nice to us. You know, he's usually always here for us when we need him. So what have you, you know. That's why you should try to pop the breaker, you know, put all the AC units on that you have, make the breaker pop, and have him go down there, see what one it is, and just buy a new breaker. Yeah, well, we knew, we know which it. one there is. There are two breakers for this apartment. That's why I have our air conditioning in the bedroom. I ran a an extension cord all the way out to the living room in order to just have that on that other breaker. Mm -hmm. uh, That's why uh, you should find out which one they are, buy new ones, and see if you can get them to replace it. Yeah, it's strange. It always breaks, it slips downstairs and not in your apartment. Well, this is a big breaker down there. I've seen it. It's huge. You know, it's not just one of those. It might be 100 little... years old. <laughs> well, <laughs> that could be too, you know. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, so it, it's, it's weird. It's strange. I don't know. I give up. You know, and then, uh, you know, I've had, I'm having trouble walking now. I just, uh, it's just, uh, and I, we want to go on vacation. Great. Stay in the hotel room. You know, right. well, you know what that's about, right, uh, Charlie? Although you're, Harry, how's your walking with the, the toes oh, I'm, missing? I'm fine walking. I don't have any problem with that because I have to run. Two or three nights a week, umpiring. So I'm, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you do your shoes? You had he had his toes removed. He had yeah. Uh, diabetes. What about your big toes? You still got those or? One of them. I've got my right big toe, but not my left. He's lo he so lost. So that doesn't throw you off. He lost lost uh, six toes. Did you lose? Uh oh, that's hmm. sound. What? Did you just hear me, Charlie? What? Can you hear me, Charlie? No, I do. Something okay. happened to the sound. I don't know. Nothing happened on this end. Mm -hmm. um, well. um, how many toes did you lose? Six? Six. Six. So we call him Charlie. Charlie Four Toes. Charlie Four Toes. Um, mm -hmm. But one of them, all, you lost all one, on one foot, right? On one foot. All my toes on my so left foot. So do you have to wear like kind of, do you have to wear something in your shoe to kind of even things out? Not anymore. I did for a couple of years, and I just figured out that it didn't make any difference. <laughs> so I quit doing it. Really? It's kind of uncomfortable. I have a special orthotic thing that, that fit in the front of my suit. Mm -hmm. and Interesting. That's what's happening. Ball a sock up and put it in the front of your shoe. And that's what I ended up doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's soft. The other thing is hard. Right. Well, you know something. It seems like you haven't had anything else with the uh, with the diabetes. No, knock on wood. Uh, it had to have something to do with what I was doing while I was playing, because I quit playing after the, the amputated the sixth toe, and I haven't lost any toes since then. Well, wait a minute. It had to do with playing what ball? Playing softball. I played softball for forty five years. It's just I, when I started losing my toes in twenty fifteen, I had to quit. The doctor said, no, you got to stop because you're not going to have any toes. And then they'll start on your feet. Well, so how did that make you lose toes? How did that, I mean, the diabetes, I can I, see that. I, I, I injured them somehow, I bruised them somehow, and the bruise would get infected and go into the bone. Okay. But, like, you can't it feel it feet over either, over. though, right? What's that? You can't feel your feet either, though, right? No, I have no, so it didn't hurt. I wouldn't know. Until so you could have, like, broke your toe room. and didn't even realize that, that you had a broken toe. And that's, right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I, that's so weird. Like, I, when my foot goes to sleep and I can't feel my foot, it's so hard to walk. So I just I understand how people, like, who can't feel their walk. Yeah. You're f now yeah. he's freezing up on us there. Mm. Hold yeah. on a second. Let's hope he doesn't freeze up any more than that. Jason, are you there? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Oh, okay. My there. Phone. There we go. You were freezing up there for You're a little back. bit. Sorry. Somebody must have turned on the microwave or something. <laughs> yeah. 
but I had uh, an infection on one one foot, really from one little location. Nobody really knows what happened, why. It's probably walking around outside without a pair of skins or a lot of uh, shoes on or whatever. And it took me months and months to get it out. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. But now it's okay. Well, my latest thing with leukemia, the leukemia I have, they, they have to watch out for sores in the mouth. And I have sores in my mouth. But they're being caused by me biting my lip. Yeah. And, and I, I assume that that is not what they're talking about. They're just talking about store, sores starting on their own without any... Probably more of herpes. More <laughs> herpes, right. No, not until you bite yourself until you get the sore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, a, a doctor of mine has looked at this. Mm-hmm. Or do this? I got it, too. <laughs> I don't know why they... Take a look inside and see if you have any bad disease there. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. I got to sneeze. Touch you. Get a zoom tight. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dang, it's going on. <laughs> what was that, like three or four? No, I yeah. don't know. Usually it comes know. in series like that with me. I go, I, I find I sneeze usually five times. Mm-hmm. And then I'm fine. But it's allergies and so on. Mm. Wait, what else is there to talk about? Uh, well, I heard the Trump uh, talking the other day. And uh, our but, but do you like to do to- guy who is on today with a whole bunch of young people. He, he was speaking very nicely. Who, Biden? Yeah. 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 The really president good. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, oh, you know what? Uh, you, you heard about the Alec Baldwin thing. No, what happened with him? Oh, they threw the whole, a whole tr- uh, case out of court. Oh, did they? Oh, good. Didn't call it a mistrial. They just said, that's it, you know. You know what, that that arbiter, or the armorist, she's 100% responsible. Yeah. Well, of course. There was no reason to bring him in on this deal. But I I so am just still torn because I'm not a gun person. But I do feel you put a gun in your hand, you need to know the rules and responsibilities of having that gun in your hand. You're putting a gun in your hand. You should be able to look at the ammunition and know this is a blank that I'm shooting. But you hired somebody to be that professional. But at the same time, Alec Baldwin was also a producer who hired that person. Well, yeah. that's that's true. That's the part we that, don't. That's we the don't, that's yeah. the hardest part. Right. Is he is the person who is a producer that hired her, and they knew that there were so many safety issues on that site set. Yeah. But I mean, it it, it was a uh, to begin with. It was a cheap production, it wasn't they? It was yeah. a in shit fact, show. It was a movie they made that probably was never even going to make it to the to the theaters, and certainly maybe not. It definitely make it. will now. Uh, oh, maybe, publicity. maybe mm-hmm. it may be a terrible movie. We don't know, you know. But they did. They weren't doing. They were doing it as a tax thing, you know. Make oh. the movie and uh, do it as a tax deal. And uh, that's that's life, but uh, I never felt that he should have been charged with anything here, you know. I mean, it's, I'm I, I think I feel sorry enough for him that he has to live with the fact that he killed her. Yeah, you know. But as a producer part, I think he should have to deal with it. And well, I think no, he should have the to producer part, he's maybe liable for legal suits against the person him. Who was well, no, but he, you know, people could sue him. For damages and so on and mm-hmm. so forth, but not a criminal charge against him. He didn't do anything criminal. When he pointed that gun with a uh, with a blank in it, he believed it was a blank in it. He had to trust the armor had put a blank in there. Right. How, they still have not been able to explain how 
a loaded uh, uh, live ammunition got into that gun. It should have never yeah. happened. Because they were off doing target practice on, you know, during the breaks. They were using the same gun to do target practice. Oh, really? That's the problem. They shouldn't have been doing never that. Never should have been a live round on that set, period. Yep. Hmm. Well, that's the rule, isn't it? No live rounds anywhere on the premises. Should have been. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, I would say it was the armorer's fault, but she may now get off because what it turned out was the prosecutors held on to material um, uh, material uh, evidence about the about the shells they were they had shells that were gotten from that place from the uh, set and they just held on to them and never said they had them that's she the got an 18th month 18 month sentence and that's y- it yes right Right. But what I'm saying is, is that, that uh, uh, well, nobody's asking the hard question. We still don't know how the live yeah. ammunition got into that gun, you know. Of course, you hire somebody well, who's never dipped in that, the armor or on a movie, and you have to expect that maybe there will be problems with that. You know, so... Yeah. But uh, he looked, he looked, uh, he, he broke down crying mm-hmm. today when, they, when they came out with that verdict. And they cannot retry the case. She has created it in such a way, the judge, that they can't retry mm-hmm. Alec Baldwin on those charges. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that, you know, this is like the podunk town down in New Mexico um, that wanted to get a celebrity to come to town, <laughs> you know? Uh, oh look, we got we we've got Alec Baldwin on trial, but they're like uh, they're like the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Pardon the the pun huh. here. Yeah, but they had no experience at doing this kind of trial, and it was uh, kind of sad, you know. That's and I'm, a, I'm wondering now if he can sue them. Oh, can he? No. Well, how much money did he have to put out to defend himself? Oh, yeah. You know. And all because the, they were just, they, they wanted the publicity is what they wanted. There was On a, what grounds would he sue? He, well, he would sue under, that they, that they charged him under false pretenses. But uh, it's not false pretenses. He pulled the trigger that killed no, someone. No, no, but it's false pretenses that there was any reason to charge him with, mur- with murder. Most people uh, who I still I think saw, he should actually be found guilty for involuntary manslaughter. Why? Because he's the one who actually pulled the trigger. But there was nothing intentional about what he nothing did. Nothing intentional. That's why I said involuntary. Well, yeah, I know, but it was really the fault of the armor. There shouldn't I, have I, been a live round in that gun, I, so he shouldn't have been able to shoot anybody. Still agree, but he was the one who pulled the trigger. That's why it's involuntary. Maybe he shouldn't have served any time. Maybe it's not any cent, you know, any fine or anything like that. But it was still involuntary manslaughter. He's the one who pulled the trigger. Yeah, but but no, involuntary manslaughter means that you intentionally did something to hurt somebody, but you didn't intend to kill them. If you hit somebody with your car, that can be involuntary manslaughter. I did not mean to hit you. I did not mean to do anything. But I did kill you. It's involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, but they only charge you with that, like if you're drunk driving or something. You were driving I, the car intentionally. I was in driving the car intentionally, and I was sober, and I still hit somebody, and I killed them. It's involuntary. I didn't mean to do it. It's involuntary. Hmm. Yeah, but they that they only do that if. You were in the wrong somehow because he pulled you know, the trigger in front of your car. You aren't charged with him involuntary manslaughter. I, I, I don't know. I disagree. You're I, driving down the street at 40 miles an hour or whatever, well under the speed limit, and somebody just darts between cars out. And hit well, wait a minute. Wait, 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 hold on a second. What's the that? difference between involuntary manslaughter, okay, and um, and an accident? Which is exactly what this would come under is an accident. Nobody intended to. Sh- he never intended to shoot her. It was an accident mm-hmm. because there weren't supposed to be bullets in the gun. It was assumed there weren't bullets in the gun. 
I'm sure on every professional set that he's ever worked on where he's handled armaments, he's had them handed to him, and he had the idea, the feeling and had to assume that the gun was ready to be used in the fake gunplay, you know, with blanks yeah. loaded in it. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it, 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 the whole thing was an accident. Yep. Yeah. You know, and there's, there were, there's nothing really criminal here except you had an armorer. It was her first job ever doing this. She didn't know exactly what she was doing. She didn't make all the, you know, cross all the T's and dot all the I's and so on and so yeah. forth. And as a <laughs> consequence... She dotted the I with a bullet. <laughs> oh. Yeah, somebody... As a result, <laughs> somebody is soon. dead. I mean... Do you remember what happened to the guy? Remember, uh, uh, what's his name, who was in the, in, was it the Black Crow? What was the, the movie years ago? Oh, oh. Uh, Brandon uh, Lee, Brandon Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he thought a gun wasn't loaded. He thought it was a blank. And yeah. in fact, I think it was a blank. And he put it to his head and shot it yeah. and it killed him. Well, blanks yeah. can kill you. At yeah. that at that close, a blank can kill you. It still yeah. is being projected out of the yeah. gun at a fairly good rate. That's, that's, that's uh, the explosion, <laughs> the air pressure. Well, because also it does actually shoot something out, but it's usually from a distance. It's not going to be anything no. At that distance, kill. by the time it gets to somebody, it's it's yeah. lost any kind of propulsion. But if you put it right but close you put to it your right head, up against your and head, that's yeah. what Brandon uh, mm -hmm. Lee did, and he thought it wouldn't hurt him. Well. Wrong. But didn't Bruce Lee die of a gunshot in a filming too? No, he His died. Dad? He died from some disease, I think, from some medical problem. Oh, I thought his dad. No, died I thought of he a died in too. a film too, making a film. Yeah, it was like wait, almost man, the same wait, thing. Hold on a second. Second. Let's go to the great Alexa? authority. Echo. How did Bruce, Bruce Lee, Lee die? Bruce Lee died on July twentieth, nineteen seventy-three, at the age of thirty-two, due to cerebral edema. Cerebral edema. Something oh. happened to his head. Yeah. So it was. It was. A, yeah. Not. Not as you said that. It sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So it wasn't an accident on set. It was just. So was it maybe his dad, Bruce Lee, that died of the blank in his head, and the other no, one? No, no, that was Brandon Lee. He oh, okay. asked Bruce Lee on that. But Brand that's what I'm saying. Well, I saw. So Maybe think of it, maybe it yeah, was but if I remember Bruce correctly, Lee. the Brandon Lee situation, the gun, that was not a real bullet in there, but it was enough no. that if you're playing with it like that, you can still kill yourself. Yep. You know. Um, so, anyway, you know. Kids, don't play with guns, okay? Right. Yep. It's not a fake or never, real. Never, whether you think it's empty or not, never point a gun at somebody. Always treat a gun as if it's loaded. That's correct. Yep. And unfortunately, in the case of uh, uh, of what went on at this in this situation, it was all a very sad thing all the way around. Yeah. And irresponsibility that caused it to happen. So you know, um, I I don't know what to uh, what to say more than congratulations, Alec Baldwin. Glad you finally got out of that one. Wow. Yeah. Terrible. Let me start playing the theme here. Actually, you can hear it now. Can you yes, hear that? Hear huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I solved the problem, folks. It was a simple problem, but I solved it. You know how I found out how to solve it? I went on Google. Uh -huh. Every answer you Albert ever want Renoso. to life is on Google somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, thanks, everybody. Who, who, uh, thanks to nobody who didn't call, and thanks to everybody who did. Thanks, first of all. <laughs> To our good friend uh, mm. uh, Jason McKinney, and uh, thanks to uh, Charlie Wallace, and thanks to Jeff. We really appreciate it, all of y'all. And uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. You got uh, Amy Manuel. She's next over most of the same GabNet. With the intersection, she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again Monday, right back here uh, on uh, on Facebook. Uh, same uh, with the uh, with the pop-up show, uh, not four o'clock in the afternoon. In the meantime, as always, and as I like to say, if you see her.
tell her I love her. And I'll see you on Monday. Okay, everybody? Bye-bye. <laughs>